The crypto market is super hot right now, but in this video, I'm gonna explain why it's still worse than the stock market. And I know a bunch of people already hate me for saying this, but that is okay. Because it's important to talk about this because if you are actually trying to grow your wealth, you really need to take a step back and look at your entire financial plan. And crypto can absolutely be a part of that plan. I'm not saying not to trade it because it is a lot of fun and you can make a lot of money, but you might see that it shouldn't be your entire financial plan. And we'll explain why in this video. And yes, the stock market is still better. But why? Why is the market better when everyone's in crypto right now? The gains are insane. You got Dogecoin, you got Safe Mood, you got a Cumcoin, and of course Bitcoin and Ethereum. But why is the stock market still better than all of that? Well, the first thing to realize is that this whole crypto mania that we're in right now is screwing up people's expectations. Lots of quick money is being made. We all know it. But the idea that you're always going to be able to triple your money overnight is not realistic. So first off, when we hear about these crazy returns, we got to realize that we're only seeing the winners. And where are we seeing all these? winners on social media and we already know how social media works right everyone shows you the best absolute picture of their life no one shows you the down days no one wants to see you depressed sitting in a chair in the dark you never see that picture on instagram it's the same thing when it comes to crypto everyone's posting their best absolute gains but what they don't show you is all the losses that are happening because who's going to post that they blew out their account on some altcoin that didn't work out y you look like an idiot that's no fun so when we're constantly bombarded by all this winning constantly or i should say fake constant winning because you know there are losers too a lot more than there are winners it starts screwing up our expectations that we could do this all day every day for the rest of our lives but if that was the truth wouldn't we all have been billionaires even before this crypto mania started wouldn't there have been something else even the stock market before everyone moved into crypto we all would have been so rich crypto isn't different yeah the technology is different but the whole idea of humans investing and trading in an economy that's been around forever and it's going to be around forever what we feel like with crypto right now is just how people felt in the late 90s during the dot-com bubble when the internet was new same thing and what happened to most of those people they were absolutely massacred in the crash that happened now we'll talk about that more in a second but the thing is you can't let your expectations get out of whack and crypto is absolutely doing that to everyone right now and the truth is there are a lot of losers because a lot of these random coins are gonna go to zero I just saw today the Tiger King lady she started her own cat coin it's just these random meme coins and even dogecoin right it didn't do much for a long time and then it really got pumped when Elon Elon was talking about it as a joke. And the thing is, these coins don't actually have anything backing them. And I know that sounds like a real boomer thing to say, because then you can say, oh, fiat money doesn't have anything backing it either. But if we compare, say, a Dogecoin to a share of a company, so I'm talking stocks, you can see what the difference is, right? Owning a piece of a business that generates cash flow versus owning a meme? That's the problem with all these meme coins. They are literally nothing. But that doesn't mean you can't make money off of them, right? People are making money. And that doesn't mean the same thing doesn't doesn't happen in stocks. In the late 90s bubble, if you put a dot com on the end of anything, even if a company wasn't even related to the internet, it was like a single gas station out in the desert, it would take off. And that's the thing about speculative bubbles. They can really throw things out of whack. So it happens in the stock market and it happens with crypto too. But eventually things come back to their actual value. Now, of course, value is subjective, but at the end of the day for stocks, you could say, okay, I own a piece of this company that creates this product, sells it, and brings this much money in. That's more than you could say for Dogecoin, which is is at the end of the day, what, a good joke? A real long running gag? Within these speculative bubbles, you run into something called greater fool theory, which is the idea that you buy a certain asset with the hope that someone stupider than you will buy it from you later at a higher price. And this goes on and on until eventually, you know, the whole thing crashes. And then the guy at the end, the most stupid person is holding the bag. And I'm saying stupid because it's greater fool theory. Who's the greatest fool? And again, like I said, this happens in the stock market. Absolutely. When you see a stock go on a crazy run and it doesn't make any sense, there's some greater fool theory in that. But at least for some of these stocks, they actually make money. They actually have a product. Other stocks, yeah, they turn into almost a meme coin. Like you remember Nikola that barely even had a car. They were rolling it down a hill. Borderline meme level as Dogecoin. But a lot of these meme coins are just purely speculative, just bubbles, greater fool theory. And there's no regulatory oversight for any of them. The SEC just seems to not care, which is pretty funny because maybe they own some Dogecoin too. But there's going to be a lot of scams, right? There already has been a lot of scams. There's going to be more. And that's the thing about regulation it's good because it protects consumers and investors but you could also say it's a bad thing and there shouldn't be any regulatory oversight of crypto because that ruins the point it's supposed to be decentralized which hey i might agree with have it be the wild west and the blockchain authenticates everything but when you go to that level you got to know it's going to be a double-edged sword right now when you put all those reasons together it makes a lot of those crypto coins very speculative and very short term so good luck trying to compound your money when you're playing the crypto game think about investing in one of these meme coins that could go to zero versus investing in a 
company that's been around for a very long time, say Coca-Cola or something. Yeah, it's not exciting, but it's absolutely shocking what a small, small return of 8% a year can do for you year after year. And something like Coca-Cola is a company where you could just park your money and leave it. You could be a very long-term investor. And I'm saying Coca-Cola is an example here. I'm not saying it's the best investment, but compare that to a lot of these coins that are absolutely crazy and which a lot will go to zero. So when you think about the benefit of the stock market over the crypto market, you got to think about those returns compounding year after year. And we all know the power of compounding, right? Even at a 5% per year, you end up doing incredibly well over time. And honestly, it's a lot easier to park your money in one stock instead of trying to pick the next meme coin that's going to take off. Now, there are some cryptocurrencies that are more long-term, say like Bitcoin or Ethereum. Now, those you might be able to invest for years like people have done versus some of the altcoins and the meme coins. But I'll tell you what, even Bitcoin and Ethereum, only recently did it look like, okay, these guys are going to stick around because they got institutional support. So all the big investors started flooding into Bitcoin and Ethereum, which basically gives it a stronger floor that it won't fall through. So it really would be shocking to see Bitcoin or Ethereum go to zero because so many of the big guys are invested in it. Now it could still happen and something could replace it, but it's going to be a much slower process versus something like this come rocket coin or whatever it is. It can be gone like that overnight. And when we move away from these joke coins and move into more of the altcoins that are a little more legit, they can still disappear like that. But there is a possibility to invest in some of the biggest coins like Bitcoin and Ethereum. And we'll talk about that in a second. But again, putting all this reasoning together, you know, the bear market in crypto when it comes and it always does come, I promise in any financial asset. But when that comes, it is going to be absolutely brutal. Just like we have huge, huge hype with Elon Musk going on SNL, where he'll probably pump Dogecoin even more. Just think about that hype reversed and even stronger. That's how bad the crash is going to be. Now, obviously crashes happen in the stock market too, right? But the difference is, is once again, there are actual assets behind those stocks. So even if the worst crash happens, at some point you'll be paying say 10 cents to make $10. That's how cheap shares of a company can become potentially, right? But when there's that much value, people are going to come in and buy. That's why we have the cycles of down and up in the stock market. But in the crypto market for a lot of these coins, it's a lot harder to say there's any fundamental value. If Dogecoin goes back to half a cent, who's going to say anything? It's like, oh, this is so undervalued, but based off what? Your feelings? I, I don't know. So that's what I'm saying when the bear market in crypto could be much, much worse. In the same way in which we're only hearing about winners right now and all the losers, you know, they're kind of quiet. Well, you're going to get some horrible, horrible stories when this thing turns around of how bad the losing got and how many people lost everything. And again, I'm not saying that doesn't happen in the stock market, but in the stock market, it's a lot easier to hold on to your stuff versus losing it all in altcoin. And we talk about a lot of those strategies on this channel. But if you had to ask me about what to do when an altcoin is plummeting, well, I don't know if you should stay in or sell or buy more. I have no idea because really anything could happen. Is some celebrity going to tweet about the coin? Will that shoot it back up? It makes it tougher. And when you think about the stock market, it has been around forever and it's going to continue to be around. It's never going to go away. And you know that everyone's retirement is where? In the stock market through our 401ks and all of that. That's not changing. And we're talking about a floor, right? Of floor and Bitcoin and Ethereum because all these institutions got into it. Well, think about the floor in the stock market. The entire world's life savings is all in the stock market, which is another reason you could feel comfortable in saying that, hey, if I park my money here, it is going to grow over time and be safe relatively compared to something like the crypto market. And that makes it much easier to compound your money year after year. Like I said, the power of compounding is huge and it's how so many people are even able to retire, right? So they have retirement savings. It's because of the stock market. It's not because of the crypto markets, except for the few people who made a ridiculous amount of money in Dogecoin, of course, the 12 year old multimillionaires as the memes go. But even when you look at the stock market, another great thing is the diversification that you get. You can buy an ETF in the stock market, which is great versus in the crypto space. You are pretty much playing in individual coins. So it is a lot higher risk, just like there's a risk of you putting all your money into one stock. What's the risk of you putting all your money in one coin? Now, of course, you can buy multiple coins, but at the end of the day, it's going to be a lot easier in the stock market to diversify. So you're once again, safer. Okay. So if we assume that the stock market is better than the crypto market, which I know a lot of people don't agree with me on, but let's just say it is, what do you do? How do you play? Well, if you're single with no family and no responsibilities and you barely have any money, then of course you love the crypto market. You love the volatility. It's fun. It's like gambling. So go for it. Put your thousand dollars life savings into the market and try to double it, triple it, whatever you want to do. That's okay for someone in your position. Now I know no personal finance expert would tell you that, but at the end of the day, yeah, it's a thousand dollars. And if you want to play with it in the crypto market, go do it. Now I'm too Indian to ever throw away a thousand dollars because my dad came to America with $7 in his pocket and I save every quarter because of it. But yeah, depending on your personality, you might be able to afford throwing a thousand dollars away, but Hey, it might turn into 
thousand, right? Now, if you're an adult with family and responsibilities, you're not going to do that. You're not going to gamble away on these altcoins and meme coins. Now, can you still get involved with crypto? Absolutely. And that's what we were talking about before when I was talking about Bitcoin and Ethereum, the two that actually have some institutional support and look like they're going to stick around. What you can do is put a small percentage of your net worth into those coins and just let it sit. And I guess it doesn't have to be a small percent of your net worth, whatever you want to do, but treat it as say an alternative investment. So if most of your money is in the stock market, which is again, most of us, right? 401ks and whatnot, then you might have some money in real estate, some money in gold. And just like that, you could have some money in crypto. Is it necessary? No. If you want to get involved though, do it. Just think about the percentage that you're putting into it and the risks that's still there. And know that you could still make great returns in the stock market, even if you didn't diversify outside of the stock market. A lot of personal finance gurus tell you, oh, you need the stock market, you need real estate, you need this and that. But the truth is you can just do great just putting it in stocks. Now, if you are a responsible family man, but you still want to gamble because it's fun, that's fine. Again, just lower that percentage that you're putting in there. Put the amount a single guy with no family and no responsibilities would put in, $1,000 and play with it. Go crazy. Fun is fun. You can't deny that. Memes are fun and these coins are fun, but also fun and money doesn't always mix. And I never play around with money. Again, it's because of the color of my skin. Now for the foreseeable future, the stock market is always going to be better than the crypto market. It's safer and it still has enormous potential. And we've covered all those reasons thoroughly. And what's great about the stock market too, is that you could buy stocks directly related to crypto, such as that Coinbase stock. That's going to move based off the crypto market. I mean, it's going to move off the stock market too, but that is indirect exposure to crypto. You can even make an argument that Tesla is indirect play on Bitcoin. As a company, they made all their money recently off their Bitcoin investment. So just another reason the stock market is better because you could play crypto through the stock market. They even have the Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs. So all in all, the stock market is winning out. Now, just in case you have taken some big losses playing in the crypto market or even the stock market, we made a video that I'm going to put right here that is going to help you get over those losses. And even if you haven't taken a loss, I promise you it's coming. This is how investing works. So watch this video right now so you're prepared to get over it and continue to grow your wealth. I'll see you there.